Hey folks, Les here again from Sixus One, and um, here we have completed the uh, the sort of cephalopoidal uh, imaginative creature that uh, you've seen in uh, previous videos now that we've done. And uh, just walking through here, I want to show you real quickly where that's all ended up. Um, here we have uh, a copy of the quick topology that I was showing in the last video then this is our original sculpt. This topology I'm going to delete right now because we don't need that any longer. Uh, that was really just for demonstration purposes. And then here is the final piece uh, with uh, topology and UVs and, and the whole shebang. So there you can see what those what that topology looks like. And I've already painted now the rest of my textures. In the, in the last video uh, you saw the major blocking of colors and forms and um, here's what the completed piece looks like. And I want to switch back to my uh, uh, sort of more luminous shader. Now let's just take a quick BPR of that. Give that a second to chug through the shadows, and pretty happy with it. Let's try BPR set to blend. There you go. So that's what this guy ended up looking like. And then uh, when we get it into our target application, we can uh, make uh, some changes and things, and do some some tricks with materials that'll even add more to it and accent things and so on. So uh, uh, shaders are super important. I mean, the way you set up a shader with the, uh, you know, your texture painting is only really kind of half of the look of it. The shader that it goes into really defines a lot. So anyway, what we're going to do is send this over to Maya. Since we've got the, uh, the texture displacement and normal baked out. So I'm going to hit Go Z, Control G. And here we we have it, and um, you'll notice uh, there's some some little things we're gonna have to correct. The uh, the little barbs are pulled away, uh, teeth are pulled away a little bit, so we'll have to re-embed that stuff, and that's that's an easy fix. Um, also, it's gonna show up a little strange in the viewport because we have uh, sRGB gamma on in the viewport. And um, what I'm going to do to uh, correct that appearance in the viewport is go into my normal map and change its color space to raw. So now we'll see our, our normal map show up properly. And then the other thing, since this is a, a smooth creature, we're going to smooth out the normals. That way we don't have any angular creasing showing up anyway, anywhere. And uh, so now you get a much clearer picture of what this guy is all about. Now from inside here we can sometimes see you know some artifacting that may happen that's just a, a byproduct of the process of outputting normals. So I'll take a once over uh, glance through the model and look for any little irregularities like that that I want to work out and uh, just pop back over to ZBrush and go back up in subdivisions a bit about halfway. I'm going to turn off RGB that way I don't mess with the, the poly paint that we have. I have Z-Ad turned on. This is while holding shift so it's in my smoothing brush. Uh, we're working symmetrically here. And I can see that the, the reason that happened in the normal map is because in this area as I sculpted um, some things maybe inflated to where they kind of uh, folded up on each other a bit much so we'll just correct that by smoothing it back out. Now I'm going to step up in subdivisions. And if you're cleaning up something from, uh, to improve your normal map, it's important that you kind of go back in. Um, you can do it at a lower subdivision level, but then you want to make sure that you go back up step by step because you're going to need to clean up each step all the way to the, the highest subdivision. Okay. So now it looks like we are there, and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, of noise 
into that area just to break it up so that it isn't quite so perfect. And I'm going to do that over here in the surface dialog. So we'll just apply that to the mesh. Give that just a second because we are working at uh, a little over 10 million polygons. So that, that could take it a second to process. There we go. And then I think I'm going to add a similar effect in some other areas too now that I see that because I, I really kind of like the look that that brought to it. So let's go over some of these smoother areas here. Okay. There we go. Let's add some of that down these tentacles. Just something to add a little bit more interest into things. I'm going to invert my masking to turn on that noise and we can get a, a look at what we have there. If I paint away from my masking, hold Control and Alt to paint out some of the masking, then you can actually see that noise appears if you're painting with it. So I really like the effect of that for adding some breakup in some of those larger areas. Alright, so let's apply that give that a few seconds again <clears throat> then uh, once that has applied we will uh, bake the texture and normal maps out again alright let's go down to texture map hit new from poly paint we're working to a 4096 square map so now we have our texture Let's go down to our lowest subdivision. We're going to create a new displacement map. And then once that is complete, we will create a normal map. Once that has finished calculating, which it is now done, we can send this back via GoZ to Maya. Okay. So now we need to uh, reset the color space on our normal map so we'll change that to raw and again we're going to need to uh, smooth our normals and there we go that I am very happy with very pleased with that really dig this so next I need to uh, make a couple little corrections like I mentioned earlier like to the uh, uh, little barbs and then uh, the teeth so one of my favorite things about working in Maya is how you can select uh, different elements from inside the UV editor. So, for instance, uh, here working with uh, these teeth and uh, barbs, which we're not going to use the teeth just yet, working with these barbs, we can just select them inside the UV editor and uh, then I have a key command bound to uh, selecting a boundary. So here we've selected the boundary for all of this. 
and then I'm just going to move that up a bit turn on soft select then control shift right click go all the way down into my soft select settings change that to just surface that way it only affects these and then I can pull these elements and embed them where they need to embed Let's take a look through. I'm going to walk through this model and see if there's anywhere else that we need to do that. So I see on these, which I should have, yes, I have symmetry turned on, so I can just select that symmetrically and we'll embed that in that tentacle. Looks like this one has a similar issue. So we'll pull that in. And those are all looking good. Looking good. Okay, so fortunately we're working with symmetry turned on. So I can just look at one side of the teeth and see what needs to happen. So here we go. And here. So now that we have all those embedded, I believe we are officially done with actually modeling and texturing this guy. <clears throat> so let's pop back over to ZBrush where I can go to the, uh, the mesh that I had standing in for the eyes. And it's a little higher resolution than what I actually want for the eyes on this creature. Plus, it doesn't have any of the modeled elements that I would like for an eye. So, that's really the last thing in terms of modeling that we need to do, is to model some eyes for this guy. So, there's a number of different ways you can do that. I'm going to handle this probably the fastest way that I know how, by sending these over to Maya, which I will do hitting Control g Send those over via GoZ. And now we should have those meshes present. And then I will separate those. And then I'll go to Modify and hit Center Pivot. So now each one of those should have its pivot point centered. And since they're all spherical, that'll be dead center. And the reason I've done that is now I'm going to isolate these and go into my display in a transform display, and I'm going to turn on selection handles. Okay, So now I have a selection handle up here for each of those. It's going to be in the dead center of them. Now, when I create a sphere, I can then snap it to that selection handle, and the sphere that I create will then be in exactly the same spot as these, but I can, uh, I can model an eye, basically, model my eye from a sphere and then snap it to exactly the right space and not have to worry about manually uh, placing that element. So just for organization's sake, for the moment, I'm going to tuck this guy in a layer of his own. I'm going to come to a front view. Go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and get a sphere. I'm going to drag that out to a size similar to what we have for one of these eyes so far. Then let's reduce some of this, some of the resolution on the sphere. Okay, 20 and 10 looks good. Then I'm going to turn off my soft select, select all my faces, I'm going to duplicate those and move them out from the surface just a little tiny bit. That's going to be a transparency uh, layer for wetness. So then I've separated those. I'm just going to temporarily hide that uh, that outer layer that we just pulled away. 
you can smooth the normals on this, then I like to select the polygons at the very back and just delete them because when I go to generate a, a, a UV map for this, that'll make that process a little, little simpler. So from here, I want to create an eye. Um, and the simple way to do this, and this is, you know, this is an imaginative creature. It could do all kinds of different things with it. Um, since it has, since the more I've worked with it, it's developed almost a, a Lovecraftian, you know, uh, a mythos kind of quality to it. I want to go with a more humanoid sort of eye, uh, just because anytime you have a, a wildly alien sort of creature, but its eyes are human, I personally just find that unsettling and, and kind of cool. So that's what I'm gonna gonna be doing here. So we're gonna extrude these polys inward, then hit G and do this again. And this is just a very simple method for making an eye. I mean, you can go through and do all kinds of things that are far more complicated, but I find that you know a lot of times this is really just enough. Um, you know, to to make for something that that works. You know, it's it's not um, you're not doing you're not doing something medical here. You know, it's it's all about what looks good. So I think I'm going to add in an edge loop um, right here, just so we have a little bit of delineation for where our our iris is going to fall, and then move the center in just a touch and then I like to expand with scaling make sure something strange isn't selected hmm, that's interesting let's go this route so we're going to expand this Ah, there we go. Let's turn off the symmetry on that. There we go. So that it really is, is really absorbent and has plenty of room there for light to bounce around uh, and renders. So, at this point, I like to go ahead and create my materials for the eye. So, I'm going to right click and go to Assign Favorite Material and hit Blend. And I'm going to start off naming this one Eyeball. And I named the shading engine as well as the shader itself. That way, whenever I export, because usually I'm taking things out to some other target program like uh, Poser or Daz Studio or a game engine, um, I like to make sure that I name the shading engines or name the the, the shader. Um, the shading engine for the shader so that uh, when it exports I know that the the uh, OBJ or FBX that's exported is actually going to have those material names intact so uh, I've shrank my selection down now and I'm going to apply a favorite material again and this one its shading engine is going to be called iris copy and paste the name so I know what I'm doing here and let's just pick a color real quick for that. Let's make it green. And lastly, I'm going to name these polygons, give these a shader, and name it Engine Pupil. The Pupil. I love that word. It's such a silly sounding word to me, but I don't know. It's, it's weird. I digress. Um, so there's there is the eye basically built. So now we need to shoot UVs on that. So to do so I'm going to go to a front view, go to UV and hit camera based. Now if we look in our UV editor here's what we'll see. Now the, the issue we're going to have right off the bat, if we were to apply a map to this uh, since we shot camera based UVs, those shoot directly onto the model. So they're going to go from the front through onto the back, so we're going to have stacked UVs, uh, which is you know that's that's not cool. We don't want that. So in order to fix that, um, since the back half of that eye is probably never going to be rendered, um, the way that I like to to deal with this is I will select the UVs up to that 
axis, that central equator of the eye, where I know is this, this outer edge. And then inside here, I will just um, scale my UVs. Yeah, it looks like one more time should do it. So now it's completely unwrapped, or almost completely. We have to do the do a similar technique with the inside, the uh, the pupil. And actually, in that area, we can just do an unwrap or a smooth. I don't like to unwrap too much on that because I want to keep my UVs really simple to work with so I can just paint the map for this inside Photoshop um, or, or whatever program you use. Sometimes I actually paint maps inside Manga Studio of all places because uh, I just, I, I'm so comfortable with it from my comic book work that uh, sometimes it just feels more natural to work in there than it does work in Photoshop. So. We need to normalize this, these UVs. So now they're normalized down to UV uh, unitized space. And actually, I'm going to make them a little smaller so that I have room inside my UV map to include the transparency map, which I'm going to tuck down here in this corner. So I'll delete my history on that. Now I'm going to show unhide the uh, the object that will get uh, transparency mapping and I'm going to do basically the same same sort of process here where we shoot camera based UVs from the front view then on this one I'm going to have to select this pole vertex and we will cut that and then unfold it and I'm going to relax it. So now as I expand these there we go that's the back half of this transparency layer so now you can see these two together, sharing their space. Uh, we need to apply a material for the transmap layer. Let's delete that history. And we'll name it Shading Engine I Trans. And yeah, let's go ahead and turn some transparency up for that. There we can see our eyeball inside there. So now we can combine these together into a single object. And I will center their pivot. And this is ready to be put in place. We're going to replace those stand-in eyeball pieces. So I'm just going to duplicate that then holding V I'll snap it and you should be able to see when it snaps exactly to our stand-in and then I will scale it to just inside the stand-in size Oop. then also that selection handle allows me to just drag over that where it would be kind of difficult to select the eye or the stand-in with the selection handle visible, I can just drag over it and there it is. So let's make another duplicate, snap it to the handle, scale it to just inside, and delete the stand in. Then once again, I want to snap it to the handle. This one we're going to scale up a bit. It looks like that 
eyeball actually got a little bit shifted and squished during sculpting. So it's not a problem though, because what we have here is, is exactly spherical. So now we can combine these. This is really the way that I prefer to do this. I'll combine these, delete these, we're going to duplicate, and then negative one on X. And now we have our eyes. So one last thing I want to do is separate them. Then we're going to combine each one again. Delete their history. And center their pivots. And the reason I just did that is so that now I can rotate each one just a little bit and get it sort of exactly into place uh, at an angle that looks right for its particular eye socket. So actually I really should have done that before I mirrored them. So let's just delete the ones on this side and we'll get these guys into place. Okay, now we can combine them, duplicate them, and mirror them. So now we have our eyes. <clears throat> okay, and giving this a kind of uh, Lovecraftian mythos style name, I called it Iksaki. So we're going to save this, save scene as, and I really don't have any place in particular for this right off uh, because this is a new workstation and I haven't brought. Uh, haven't brought Mythos stuff over here yet, which is kind of a crime because Mythos stuff is so important to us. So uh, let's go ahead and make a new folder. I'm going to call it Mythos. And this is Kasaki. And as soon as something is finished saving, I like to archive it. That way it collects my textures together and I know that I can clear out my GoZ cache uh, and be able to re-reference my textures locally. So that's just a, just a bit of, of tidiness in, uh, in the work. So there we have our finished creature and really the next thing is uh, I need to paint uh, a texture for the eyes and then we'll be rigging it. So. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to rig this for Poser and probably make it retro compatible so that it'll go into older versions of Poser as well as maybe Daz Studio. Um, and who knows? Perhaps if uh, if there's a request for it or if anyone uh, is, is interested and shows some interest, um, then maybe we'll do a Maya rigged version of it, which would be cool. I, I love rigging in Maya. I wish, I wish I could just rig four Poser and Death Studio from inside Maya and be done with it, but that is not the case yet. Maybe someday, but not yet. So uh, anyway, in the meantime, there is our, our creature all finished and, and very uh, you know, mythos looking tentacled beast um, hope you've enjoyed the videos and uh, hope you uh, hope you come back to watch the next one when we uh, when I show you this guy I uh, probably won't show the entire process of rigging it because that can be very involved and take some time but uh, uh, you know uh, we'll come back and do one more video that shows this guy after rigging so that he's being posed and being put to use and, and all that uh, just to kind of wrap things up so anyway um, until then and if you heard the little bloop that's uh, sounds like uh, like Rebecca is calling for me so uh, that's that's my cue to get on off here so anyway until next time till the next video I uh, you know, hope you folks enjoyed it and uh, you know don't forget if you uh, have any questions comments um, just anything at all like that feel free to leave them um, under the video on the YouTube page or you can reach us through uh, facebook.com slash 6 one media or twitter.com slash 6 one media um, 
or six is one. I think both are active. Um, yeah, uh, or you can send us a site mail on Renderosity. There's a million different ways to reach us, and pretty much any of them you can find just by going to Google and typing six is one. You will find us right off the bat. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, we'll see you.